Me time, all time. Milk today. So a lot of the time it seems natural to think of religion and science as these two opposing forces that have never gotten along. But when we fall into that narrative, we are forgetting, among other things, that much of modern science arose out of a society defined by its religion. The so-called Islamic Golden Age was a period ranging from around 750 to 1260 CE, and was a time that is significant as much for its advancements in the early sciences as for its importance in the development of the Islamic tradition. And of the many early scientists of the Islamic Golden Age, and there were a great many, perhaps none is more important than the man often considered to be the first scientist, Abu Ali al-Hassan ibn al-Hassan ibn al-Haytham, or as he's known in the West, Al-Hazan. For convenience purposes, I'm going to refer to him simply as Al-Haytham, which I recognize doesn't make any kind of sense grammatically in Arabic, but it's become the standard non-Latinized shortening of his name, and I'm going to stick with it. Al-Haytham was a famous Muslim scientist, polymath, astronomer, philosopher, theologian, and mathematician. Coincidentally, he had really large business cards. He was born in the city of Basra in modern-day Iraq in 965 CE. At the time, Basra was known as an important center of learning, and home to a great library of over 15,000 books, or in modern-day terms almost two gigabytes worth. After building a reputation for himself as a scholar, Al-Haytham was called to Egypt by the Fatimid Caliph Al-Hakim and told to devise a way to regulate the flow of the Nile, the flooding of which had been causing death and destruction in Egypt since the beginning of civilization. After realizing that the task was impossible with the technology of the time, Al-Haytham began to fear he might be executed by the temperamental Al-Hakim, who later came to be called the Mad Caliph. A good rule of thumb, when someone has the word mad in their title, it's generally good policy to be prepared when you disappoint them. So to avoid execution, Al-Haytham pretended to be insane by babbling gibberish and was put under house arrest for 10 years. Al-Haytham dedicated his newfound time to studying the properties of light and conducted a number of experiments involving lenses, mirrors, and most famously, a camera obscura. Now a camera obscura is basically a dark box with a pinhole in one side. The light from outside the box travels through the hole and projects an image of the outside world on the opposite wall of the camera obscura, except the image is upside down and backwards. In fact, I made a whole video on them a while back if you need more explanation. Though the camera obscura itself had been around for years, Al-Haytham was the first to be able to explain how it worked, and used it to prove that light travels in straight lines, as evidenced by the fact that light from up high was projected at the bottom of the box, and light from down low was projected up top, resulting in the flip-flopped image. This, along with numerous other observations on everything from the structure of the eye to why the moon looks larger on the horizon, which by the way is purely a figment of the imagination, were published in his famous Book of Optics, which besides being hugely important to the development of our understanding of light is especially notable in that it is the earliest example we have of experimentation involving controlled testing, along with mathematics and physics. Al-Haytham's reliance on controlled and repeatable experimentation is the basis of the scientific method. It's the process by which nearly all modern science happens. This has led to many historians dubbing him, perhaps a little hyperbolically, as the first scientist. Apparently not content to simply be the first scientist, as well as the father of optics, Al-Haytham went on to develop the link between algebra and geometry, argue that celestial objects are bound to the laws of physics, make early observations about the psychology of optical illusions, and to top it all off, invented analytical geometry. Not bad for someone living in the so-called Dark Ages. Al-Haytham and his contemporaries not only made some of the most important discoveries in history, but also laid the very foundations of modern science itself. We all owe them a great debt.